All right, everybody, welcome back to the channel. Hope you guys are doing well. Uh, thanks for coming in today and joining us. This is video number seven in the JMRI series. And today I wanted to specifically talk about how to input car information into the database. Honestly, considering that people who use JMRI use it to operate trains, this is kind of the whole reason we're here. Not that this is the most important video in making it work, but uh, on the flip side, this video is uh, helpful because you won't really have any purpose of using any other part of JMRI, at least for operations, if you don't input cars. So there are, of course, lots of other tools that JMRI has for different things with decoders and panels and control and all kinds of other really awesome things. But if you want to route cars with JMRI for operations, you've got to put the cars in the database. So I want to walk you guys through how to do that today. We're going to start by going to our menu and since I added Operations Pro onto the menu, I'm going to click that. I'm going to go to Cars and that's going to bring up this menu right here. And you can tell that this menu has nothing on it. All right, we, that's because we do not have any cars currently. So I'm going to go over here to my train and I'm going to look at the first car I have. So this is a Canadian National box car. Uh, we've got its number. We can see its color. And I know that it is a 50 foot box car. Uh, in JMRI, you do not want to include the length of the couplers. Obviously, this box car has a lot of draft gear. And so that's probably another two feet or so on each side. A uh, nice thing about JMRI is it accommodates all that for you. So you just need to measure uh, the length of the car from body to body. And then it's going to add two feet on each side of that car when it, ever, when it actually uh, builds trains and whatnot. So. Uh, just remember, do not add extra length for your couplers. All right, so let's go ahead on the car menu. I'm going to hit add car. And now I see this menu. So let's kind of pull this down a bit. So we're going to choose the road. The road is Canadian National. This is written in um, reporting marks. All right, so let me go down here to CN. There we go. Road number, we have 412565. 412565. This is a box car. Um, it does not satisfy any of these, so we're not going to worry about any of those, but these are designations that will use allow, or require the program to um, use them in their particular uh, consist and whatnot that it builds depending on requirements. You know, if you require a Fred or require a caboose or if it's a utility because it's part of a Mo train or if it's a passenger. Uh, or if it's a tank car full of hazardous material, you know, that's when you'd want to have these boxes checked. All right. Uh, the length was 50. If for whatever reason you measure a car and the length is not listed here, you could always go to edit. It brings up a little sub menu. You can type in the length that you want. I'll just do 55. You can click add. And then now you have 55 as an option right there. Okay. But for us, this is 50 feet. We are in the CN staging yard, and we'll just say we're on track one. It doesn't really matter currently what track I say it's on. In my case, as long as I put all these cars on the same track. All right, this part auto fills. I don't really ever worry about this. You can if you want to. If you want to actually weigh your car in ounces, you can put that in there. Uh, I'm in HO scale, so for this example. Uh, and then tons would be uh, when it does like horsepower requirements and calculations for locomotives. All right. The color was brown, and you can add a color by clicking edit. You can add whatever color you want, but it does have a pretty good selection. In my case, I'm going to leave the load as empty. Uh, there's a reason that if I'm building it or if I'm labeling a car that's in staging, I'm always going to leave its load to empty. I'm going to have a video come out later about making custom loads. Uh, but if I were to go to edit, I'd have this video come or this screen come up and actually make that small again. And then we could actually create a custom load and click add. And then you get to choose all these other uh, aspects or properties for that load. You can also add another type of empty load theoretically. So I know that sounds like an oxymoron, but I will have a video that talks more in detail about that later, because if you want to do schedules and custom loads, uh, you're going to, you're going to live on the screen for a little while. All right. Because there's a lot of work to be done. So, but more on that later for now, we're going to go to kernel. Kernel is what you use when you want to create a group of cars that will stay together the whole time. So like, for example, if I have uh, a three set of intermodal cars that stay, stay together because they're articulated, I could make a kernel for those three 
and then anytime the uh, program moves those three cars it's always going to move them together all right uh, kernel is also really useful if you're going to run unit trains you can put all the cars on that unit train into a kernel and then it will never break those apart uh, built if you want to put an optional built year you could just for kicks i'll say 1970 not that it matters and then owner um, this is what you put if you want a particular uh, railroad organization to have ownership over that car. There are perks for this. I never, ever use this. So honestly, I'd have to go back and read up on what it really actually does uh, to be able to really explain it to you because I've never used it. And I've built a ton of layouts in JMRI. Uh, comment, you can add a comment to the car. Uh, and then under certain options, you can have this become visible uh, in different situations. I also never use this. Uh, that's just because... I don't have anything I need to say about a particular car. All right. And then you always make sure you hit add car. And if we go pull up our big database here, we now have one car sitting on stage and track one in the CN staging yard, 50 feet. It's empty box car. There it is. There's all the details. All right. This moves. Uh, this is how it counts and keeps track of how often that car has been uh, moved either into a train or between towns or between industries or whatever. Obviously, starting out, this is at zero. All right. And then we would just very simply uh, repeat this process. Uh, real quick, let me show you what we would do if uh, we found a car type that was not represented in JMRI. So all these types are technically. Um, but let's just say that, for example, we had this two bay hopper. And let's say that instead of just using the JMRI built in codes that it has, let me pull those back up. So we're going to go to add car for the covered op, uh, hoppers. It has these options. It's got uh, hopper chemical, hopper cement, um, hopper grain, hopper sand. We know that those are all covered, but it doesn't say covered. So if you wanted to change that, you could, you could say, okay, edit. And then let's say we're going to do covered um, hopper. And then let's do like aggregates for heavy things like silica, sand, clay, that type of stuff. Um, we'll click add uh, yes we're going to add it to service and then this allows you to select which tracks we're going to actually add it onto i'm going to put yes because i want it on all those uh, let's just say that we put it on everything except the local so i'm putting it on every train except the local this part is really something you technically would want to create all your other cars before you start building towns and trains uh but unfortunately, since I didn't do it first, I have to do this now. So we'll do the staging yard, both tracks, interchange. Uh, let's see, not the local uh, KCS East, all tracks, KCS West, all tracks, local build, no. And then the wayside, nah. All right, and then that'll do. Okay, cool beans. Perfect. All right, and then we're going to close that out. So now I have this covered hopper aggregate. And then I could, you know, add in all the car details from there. So. If you ever find that a card you're trying to put in there is not listed, or you just want to create your own codes, you can totally do that. I do have several railroads where I have literally deleted every single car code it came with and just remade them all myself uh, into whatever I like. Okay. Um, I do also use um, descriptive car codes. Uh, that's why it tells you what type of card is. If you wanted to, you could use AAR codes uh, in, in your descriptions as well. Depends on kind of how you like to operate. I like to operate with descriptions because I don't like things to be too sophisticated and I don't want to have to remember <laughs> what all those AAR designations are. But as far as adding a car to the database, uh, that's it. Okay. I'm not going to shoot the video here showing me adding all 14 of the other cars. Uh, that would be probably another 20 minutes or so. Uh, so we'll pass on that. But uh, by the time I make the next video, I will have all of these cars um, added into the database. So Thanks again for joining today. Hopefully this was helpful. If it was, please leave a like and a comment. Don't forget to subscribe. I do have more videos coming out on this later. Uh, plus stay tuned because I have um, another operating video coming out from uh, the Coxton sub. So thanks again for joining and we will see you guys next time.